Good morning. Good morning. It's funny because while I was getting ready, Michael was like, are you nervous? Usually, you know, you're nervous. And I'm like, I'm going home. I was like, I'm not nervous. Like, literally, my sisters and I, every time we come down to South Jersey, we're like, oh, we're going home. This is home. And I'm so happy to be here with all of you. There's so many people that last time I visited, I didn't see. And today, I came and I saw some of these faces. I'm so happy that you are here. Like Nate said, there's a lot of you um, that were either babies or in your mom's belly that I didn't get to know. I wish I want to get to know all of you. Um, but I'm so happy that I'm here. Um, it's always, always great to come back home. Thank you, Pastor. I didn't know I was going to see you today, so I'm glad that you're here. Thank you, First Lady. Thank you to the administration of this church for inviting me to come and speak to your young people today. It's always an honor to be able to come and share the word of God with his people. So I also want to say thank you, Nate. Nate is such a great guy. We need to find him a wife. Okay, let's just put that out there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Nate. Sorry, but I love you so much. Okay, he has always, since I was little, he has always worked in the church, always been part of the church. Don't burn him out. Okay? So let us all work together so that he does not feel burned out, because we need him. All right, and thank you so much uh, for reading the meditation passage, Acts 20, verse 17 to 24. All right? This is going to be an English service. I'm going to speak English. If I could add Creole in there, I'll do that, but we'll get it together. All right, so Acts 20, verse 17 to 24, it says that Paul, he was reviewing with the elders of the church what he has done. He has served the Lord with humility, with tears, with trials. He taught publicly, and he also taught from house to house. He taught not only Jews, but he also taught Greeks. He taught them about repentance towards God and faith. Today, the title of our sermon is Commitment, the Key to Christian Leaders. Commitment, the Key to Christian Leadership. And why that's important to me is because I feel like I'm a born leader. That's the gift that God gave me. I know how to strategize, organize, plan. That's just who I am. And I was groomed here in Kapanaum, now in New Eden, and I came to Salem to form me. Okay? A Kapanaum that did that. Amen. All right? So I know that in this church, there are more leaders to come. There are leaders sitting here in these seats. You just have to believe that you're a leader. So today I'm going to spend some time talking about what does a committed leader look like? What are the characteristics? Paul also talked about the future, right? He talked about going to Jerusalem. And he already knew that he was going to have a lot of trials and tribulations in Jerusalem. But he knew that he needed to stay committed and be committed because of the work that he had to do to continue to proclaim the gospel, and he was doing it with joy. In ministry, there's going to be hardship. However, if you are a committed leader, through the hardship, you're going to continue God's work. Paul demonstrates for us that commitment is a key ingredient in successful Christian leadership. New Eden youth and New Eden adults, because I see a lot of adults, Fanny, Joanne, I see adults here too. Um, you guys need to be committed to growing, learning, serving, 
and leading other young people, other adults to Christ. Paul was sharply focused and was driven by a clear sense of purpose, both in his life and in ministry. Paul followed his goals with perseverance and finished his race. Today, I will spend time discussing commitment and how it is an integral part of leadership. Commitment is taking the first step towards, first step forward, and then pushing through any obstacles, trials, and stretching our limits to make our passions and our vision a reality. Commitment is an action that moves us over forward again and again, Sabbath after Sabbath, because we are all in for this cause. Let me see how many people in this room, by raising your hand, how many are all in for New Eden Youth Church? This should be all of you if you're here. You could have been at home, right? But you're here, so that says you're committed. Small steps forward will deepen our convictions and lead to a stronger commitment but it must start somewhere. Commitment always has that first tangible step that comes from a decision that you make in your hearts. The New Eden administration has taken steps in establishing this church. However, you all, the youth and the adults, need to decide in your hearts to remain committed to this church. Commitment to grow in your own leadership. Commitment to doing God's work. Commitment in sports isn't thinking about practice. It is going out the door and doing the work. Commitment in marriage isn't saying that you will forgive the other person. It is forgiving and working through challenges that come day in and day out. Commitment isn't saying, you know what, I really need to lose weight. It is actually doing it, eating well, exercising, and becoming the change, changing your lifestyle. Now, if you knew me when I was in New Eden, I was like this, okay? But I made a commitment to living a healthy lifestyle. And what that commitment means, I need to go to the gym. I can't eat daily every single day, okay? Maybe on the weekends. I need to commit to a total lifestyle change. And why do I need to do that? Because I would like to work with young people. I want to see my kids grow. So I needed to commit to a total lifestyle change. Commitment takes the first step forward, but it doesn't end with the first step. It takes more steps because we are convinced that we are doing what needs to be done. We must learn to be committed to God, to a cause, to our family, to our job, to school, to New Eden Youth Church, and never look back. Please bow your heads and let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today we are talking to your church about commitment. We need young people adults to be committed to this work. You said that your work will end with a generation of young people. It is about time that we groom them. It is about time that we share our leadership status with them so that they can continue this work. God, speak through me to this church so that we can all leave this sanctuary filled. All these things I pray in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen. Commitment is important for leaders because if you're a leader, you will not follow someone that's not committed. I'm a leader, and if I am in an organization or a committee or in a church, I will not follow someone that's not a leader. I will not follow someone that is not committed to the organization, to the church. 
If we do not see our leaders 100% committed to the cause, we won't follow them. I know that Elder Nate and Elder Max and the pastors and the elders of this church are committed to you. I know that because they've started this church. That's huge. So that means that you all need to be committed to this church as well. God can nature and strengthen our commitments if we will take small steps forward. And by doing this, others will draw to us and do the work with us. Today, we will consider the topic of commitment in leadership under three subheadings. I wish it was on the board, but I didn't get to send it to you, Nate, sorry. Under three subheadings, the direction of commitment, the degree of commitment, and the demonstration of commitment. These three areas were depicted in Ephesus through Paul. Let's start with the direction of commitment. What are we committed to? What are those things we are willing to die for? And what and who are we willing to give everything for? What are the things we simply won't stop doing and giving ourselves to? The reality is that we are all committed to something. And it is important to make sure we are committed to the right things. Let us identify some areas that we should commit to in our lives to be in the right direction of commitment. Let's talk about commitment to maintain integrity. Make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Second Peter 3, verse 14. Integrity is the state of being of sound moral principles, upright, honest, sincere. In the world today, integrity is not valued as important in life and in business. Again, for those of you that know me, I, integrity is huge. Whether you like what I'm saying or you don't like what I'm saying, I'm going to tell you the truth. And there are times that it's not seen well, but we have to be honest with one another, and that's how we grow. God knows we're not perfect, but he desires that we strive towards perfection every day. To be spotless and blameless means to live with integrity. How do you maintain integrity? You need to be transparent. A person of integrity is not claiming that they have it all together in all areas. On the contrary, a person that has integrity is willing to be open about their strengths and their weaknesses. I can do that. I'm strong at that. You know what? I really need some help in that area. Can you help me? Because that's not my strong stoop. Having integrity also means living what you say and believing in it. Model what you teach. And you tell the truth even when it's hard. All leadership is built on trust. And trust comes from having a reputation for living out what you believe and for telling the truth. As a pastor, leaders, people must trust you. Will you make a commitment to lead with integrity? Will you be honest about your strength and your weaknesses? Will you tell the truth to those you lead even when it's tough? Another area we should commit to in our lives to find the right direction is the commitment to forgive those who have hurt us. Make every effort to live in peace with all men. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no one is, has a bitter root that grows. This is from Hebrew 12, verse 14 through 15. Leaders forgive those who hurt them. Did you hear me? Leaders do. 
Regular people that don't claim to be leaders, they do not. But leaders, they forgive those who hurt them. You will be hurt in ministry, both intentionally and unintentionally. You will be hurt by those who recognize that they're hurting you and those who do not recognize it. You will be hurt during ministry, and that's a fact, and trust me, I know. But God doesn't want us to give up. God wants us to forgive and move forward. You've got to be willing to forgive those who try and take you down. If you allow bitterness to build, it will choke your heart for God and for people. You will forgive when you you will forgive when every bone in your body wants you to retaliate. But if you are a leader, you will. It's easier said than done, but God is counting on us all. Commitment to rest upon and trust God. That's very important. Anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did. Let us therefore make every effort to enter into God's rest. Hebrews 4 verse 11. You need to learn how to hand over every worry and every burden to God, trusting him for his interventions. Jehoshaphat said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 4. How do you release burdens? First, you've got to pray. God is the only one that knows all things and can do all things. Share your burdens with him in prayer. Then you need to spend time in God's words, meditating on his promises, remembering that what God has done in the past for you, that he can do them again. God has a good track record of taking care of us. Remember what God has done for you before and let your faith be strengthened that he can do it again. Will you commit to surrender your stress and your burden to God? Commitment to being a blessing and an encourager. As a Christian leader, you should build people rather than tearing them down. God calls us to be encouragers, not discouragers. Take the time to look beyond the problems and look at the potential at those you lead. People will discourage you in life. You need to be a source of encouragement. As youth leaders, department directors, elders, pastors, we are dispensers of hope. That's what it means to be a Christian leader. You bring hope of Jesus in a hopeless situation. You help people who seem to be helpless. You let them know that they can do it. Will you be the voice of encouragement in this community, in this church, in your homes? Commitment to be a peacemaker. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Ephesus 4 verse 3. Leaders are called to make every effort to reduce conflict. Our society is filled with conflict. Jesus says, blessed are peacemakers. I am looking at my generation and the generation that sits before me today. You are peacemakers. The generation that comes before me in our community, I don't want to say, mm, but our community, they love chaos and confusion. When people are against each other, that is when they are comfortable. But my generation, your generation, the generation that comes after that, we can make a difference. Let us be peacemakers. You've got to deal with different point of views. 
So as the New Eden Church continues to grow, my hope is that the youth, the adults can sit together and share different perspectives that will add something indispensable in this ministry and in this community. You can walk hand in hand without seeing eye to eye on every single issue. There are issues that you'll get along. There are issues that you will not get along. And that is okay. Don't let anyone, the generations before me, don't let them tell you that it's not okay. It's okay. We don't have to agree, but we need to respect one another. We need to be peacemakers. All right? God will not bless a divided home, a family, or a church. That means one of our most important jobs is to promote unity. Will you have the courage to promote peace and unity? If you see disruption and chaos and confusion, I hope that you all become agents of peace. Stand up during a meeting or a town hall or a call me then and say, listen, let's take a moment to pray because we need to have peace. Commitment to continue to grow, increase, and develop. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. 2 Peter 1, verse 5 through 8. Learning is the lifestyle of leadership. The moment that you think you have it all, you're dead. You're dead in the water. You must never stop growing. You've got to train yourself continually. Always look for ways to grow in your character and in your skills. The very nature of leadership is tied to growth. You've got to grow if you're going to be leaders. Take a regular look at yourself. Where do you need to grow? Where do you need to learn? What's the best way to get training? Now that we have identified all of the areas that we should commit in our lives to be in the right direction, we will dive into the degree of commitment. The degree of commitment. Once we have named what it is that we are committed to, we need to be honestly and objectively measuring that commitment. To measure our commitment, we need to look at three specific areas in our lives, our time, our relationship, and our resources. Time. For many of us, the bulk of our time may be spent at work, at school, but how much time do we have that is free? If we say that we have our family as the number one commitment, what percent of our free time do we spend with them? If we say we are committed to God, what percent of our time do we give to worship, prayer, and reading God's words? Time. Relationships. If our marriage and our family is top priority, how much time and energy do we spend investing in those relationships? How much time do we spend together as a family? What specific things are we doing? I heard third Sabbath is family days, correct? Right, so when we leave here, we're going to spend time with our family, not living room, basement. What are we going to do when we leave here together as a family? Okay? If we are committed to New Eden Youth Church, how much time do we set aside thinking about 
programs, planning, meeting, sharing ideas, building relationships within the members. Resources, where do we spend our money? In many ways, this is the most revealing about our commitment. If we are committed to God, how much money goes to God's work? If you're not tithing young people and giving offering and you have a little job, please make sure that you do. That is part of commitment. If we are committed to certain causes and issues, how much money do we give to them? I encourage the New Eden administration to be committed in the finances of this youth church. How much funds are put aside, Pastor, for this church? The third subheading that we're diving into in the commitment of leadership is the demonstration of our commitment. The demonstration of our commitment. If we really want to strengthen our commitment, then we need to share with others what we are committed to, because then we will more likely work towards it. Once we have made our decision public, it's hard to take it back. Making our commitments public strengthens our conviction to follow through. New Eden, guess what? You're on YouTube. Did you know that? That is a demonstration of commitment. And because you're on YouTube, and because you launched the new church, you must be committed to follow through. Commitment is vital to every leader, and yet we don't suddenly arrive one day fully committed. It takes time. It takes time to reflect on our passions and courage. We need small victories and successes to help us see ourselves as leaders and know that we can move forward with God's power. In many ways, commitment is a process, but it starts with action. What are some steps we can take today that lets us know that we are fully committed to the New Eden Church? Let me hear some, shout them out. What are some steps that we can take to show our commitment to this youth church? I can't, I can't hear. Participation. Focus. Excuse me? Helping others. Community outreach. I can't hear. Coming to church board, if you're part of the church board, coming, your voice, your vote counts, yes. Bringing a friend, I see a lot of empty seats, bring a friend. Excuse me? Bring your family, very good. That's great. These are all steps that we can take to ensure that we become fully committed. And as we demonstrate these actions, we can move forward. God created us to lead, and he sees us as leaders. We need to commit ourselves and take the first steps forward. When we make public our commitments, we are more likely to work towards them. I encourage my elder Nate and elder Max to host a meeting with all of the adults and the young people of this church and take a survey of their skills and their talents and their gifts and then have a commitment service to include everyone in ministry. Everyone needs to be committed in order for New Eden Church to fulfill its mission. Every single person that I see here today must have a job must be in some type of committee, must be in some type of commission, department, as a leader or as a supporter. Every single person is important. Now we all know the path of commitment, how to measure our commitment, and how to display our commitment. 
I want to spend time discussing the characteristics of a committed Christian leader. So we learned how to become a committed leader, and now we're going to learn the characteristics of a Christian leader. Intimacy with Christ. The first and most important thing leader, Christian leaders need to do is develop a strong, intimate relationship with God. Developing this intimate relationship with God is through daily prayer, reflective Bible study. It is vital if you want to be a Christian leader. As Christian leaders, we need to follow Jesus' example and to make sure that we keep Jesus at the forefront of our life in ministry. We can also learn from scripture and receive guidance on how Jesus wants us to lead the people that we are overseeing. I believe in this time alone that God wants us to grow. God is helping us seek direction for long time sustainability. We need to be developed in our intimacy with Christ. Passion and surrendering to the Holy Spirit. That is another characteristic of a committed Christian leader. Jesus lived his life and did everything that he did with a clear sense of purpose and thus was spirit driven. Mark 1 verse 35 and 39. When the disciples received the Holy Spirit and began their ministry, we noticed that they followed the example of their master and lived a focused and spirit-driven life. They did, not follow, they did not allow anything, including good things, in the ministry to distract them from the main thing, which was their top priority. Be passionate about the work of God. Get excited about it. And let the Holy Spirit use you in ways that you didn't even know was possible. Again, we're talking about characteristics. Servant leaders. That's my favorite. Servant leaders. To learn what truly is servant leadership is important that we follow Christ's commandments and example. In Matthew 20, verse 26 and 28, it says Christ tells us that we need First of all, to lead in an attitude of servanthood. True servant leaders know their strengths and their weaknesses, and they surround themselves with those who have complementary abilities and can offset their weaknesses. Servant leaders invest themselves in enabling others to do their best, allowing teamwork to move their ministry. As a leader, you need to know what you're strong at, you need to know what you're weak at, and you surround yourselves with people that may be stronger in this area or stronger in that area. A serving, a serving attitude does not imply willingness to be abused by others or tolerate ex exploitation. A true servant leader is disciplined in all areas of life knowing their first responsibility is to serve God, then serve others. Servant leaders must first of all please God. They are not moved solely by the needs of others. Servant leaders serve God and in turn will serve others. Integrity, I spoke about integrity again, but it is part of the characteristics of a good Christian leader, integrity. One of the keys to successful long Christian leadership is the desire to live with integrity. In 1 Timothy 3, verse 8 through 12, as well as Titus 1 through 5 through 8, it lists 24 characteristics that should be seen in Christian leadership. Some of these include good behavior, not greedy for money, not given to excessive drinking, not quick-tempered, not, uh, being, not being of self-control, a responsible steward, one that holds fast to God's word and has a good reputation 
outside of the church. You can have, are you a person of integrity? If inside the church you are a saint, you are doing your thing, you are praising God, you are leading, but outside the church, that's not the same person. That is not a person of integrity. Some of these including, um, it is, it tells us that these qualities should be evident in our lives. In saying this, it does not say that the person has to be perfect in Christian leaders, in, as a Christian leader. That is not possible because we're all human and we all fall short at times. However, it is saying that these things must be evident most of the time. As Christian leaders, we need to have the same commitment in our life. Integrity. We need to have good testimonies both inside and outside of the church, before God and before man. Christian characteristics. Risk takers. That's another favorite characteristics of mine. The concept of risk is a challenging one for many in Christian leadership. Setting too simple a goal can severely limit the organization's ability to achieve great things for the kingdom of God. If we set small steps, incremental goals, there is a tendency that we do what we're used to, and that's it. But if we challenge ourselves with big goals, then we need to take risk in redefining our strategy. If it was, it was a risk for your pastor and your administrator to launch a youth church, you are the first. You are trailblazers. You are an example in the Haitian community of Allegheny East. New Eden is three or four years ahead of everyone else. You guys sitting here, you guys might not think about it. You guys not, might not see what I'm saying. But this was a huge risk. And I hope that you guys commit to what you guys are doing because you guys are the model. You guys are the first. No other church is doing this in Allegheny East except for you. And I'm from here, so don't let me down. Shine, okay? You might not know what your pastor had to endure because of this decision. But this was a risk that was solely based on saving souls, saving the next generation. Being a Christian leader requires you to stand up sometimes and stand out as long as you are connected to the Holy Spirit. Make decisions that will expand the kingdom of God, but also stand on the principles of the Bible. Characteristics of committed Christian leadership. Teamwork. Teamwork is an important characteristic. From Jesus' teaching and models, we learn that there is no place for a lone ranger in the kingdom of God. All Christian leaders need to be team players, team builders that are committed to the discipline of working with and for a team and making themselves accountable to others in the team. As a team player or worker, you do not neglect your own personal tasks or goals. However, you give adequate attention and priority to the collective tasks and goals and invest in empowering others. Otherwise, Christian leaders become worldly, they become selfish, and they stop being a Christian leader. There are no insignificant ministries in the church. Every person serving in the church makes up a network of volunteers for Jesus. Each person is dependent on the other for the job to get done. Some of the ministries are visible. We can see them. 
But some are hidden behind the scenes and they are crucial. There are people that are here every Saturday in media or every Saturday cooking downstairs or with the children. People don't see them, but they're the engine that keeps this going. All are important to the health and the, the validity of the New Eden Youth Church. All members are team workers. The last characteristic of Christian leadership is committed to making disciples. We can't sit here every single Saturday for ourselves. We have to share the good news with others. The last word of Christ before returning to heaven are recorded in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 through 20. And it says, therefore, go and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all that that commands all the commands that I have given you. The verse is clear. It is a clear command to reach people with love and saving the and sharing the message of Jesus. As a Christian leader, the core of what we do is to love God, love people, and make disciples. That's it. Let me pause by saying that I have been born a Seventh-day Adventist. I have been in this church my entire life. Our community is committed and they love making disciples. They love seeing our seats full. They love to have Bible studies. They love to have crusades. They love to get people in the church. However, we fail miserably. We fail miserably at what God asks us to do, and that is to love one another. But we can change that. We can change that. We need to focus our energies on loving and bringing people into the kingdom and teaching them how to continue to grow in their faith and service of God. In conclusion today, Christian leadership begins with a calling from God. And that calling comes from two parts. First, God gives you a desire to serve him. And second, the church needs to recognize in you those elements of character and gifts which qualifies you as a leader. Do not sit here in these pews and be like, oh, they don't call me for anything. They don't ask me to do anything. They don't need me to do anything. They don't put me in this. But you are not showing the characteristics that the leaders need to see to put you in these roles. Do the work. Make sure that you're doing the work so that you, and let God use you first and then the church will recognize your leadership. In those qualifications, character is much more prominent than gifts. The first qualification for Christian leadership is Christ-like character. If we are to lead Christ's people in Christ's way, we must ourselves be men and women who walk with Christ. New Eden Youth Church, you have something great here. I was raised in this church. I ministered in this church. I am a product of this church. I was so committed. I remember driving the church van, being an adventurers, pathfinders, hosting banquets. I remember standing up here crying. I was so committed in everything that I did in this church. And I want to see my young people here doing the same. You are the church of today. You are in the right church to do great things in ministry. There are churches that don't have what you have. You are in the right church. Let God use you. 
Commit to a ministry. Commit to volunteering in a particular area. Commit to coming to church every Sabbath. Leaders, be committed to seeking new leaders, cultivating their talents, mentoring them, teaching them, supporting them. This is true leadership. My hope is that when I come back to New Eden, I am going to see the commitment level in this ministry. May God help you all to be men and women committed to leading this church. God bless you, and I love you.